This is Paving the Way to March Madness, presented by Nico Luck. The men's college basketball season comes to a close on Monday night with the national championship game going down between UConn and Purdue. Let's preview the game. We're going to do it with New York Post sports reporter Zach Braziller, who is out in the Arizona, Phoenix area to cover the Final Four. He'll be there at the championship game. Zach, how's it going? I know it's been a busy weekend for you. Good, good. We got the game everyone wanted to see. Purdue and UConn clinging against Edie. Um, UConn, you know, is just destroying everyone. We'll see if they can destroy Purdue. I, it's look, everyone. It, it's got great storylines. You know, the 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 team trying to make history repeat for the first mm -hmm. time since fall six oh seven. You have Zach Eady, who's really been the best player in the sport the last two years. Purdue looking for redemption after losing in the first round last year. Uh, yeah, look, I mean, NCA has got to be thrilled to the, get this game. The two two number one seeds. One and two in Ken Palm. I mean, I, I think everyone's pretty fired up for what you know maybe can be a great game. Yeah, I think so. And you and I talked about this before. So, you know, we always talk about the matchups you want, and sometimes it doesn't happen. But here we go. We got a matchup that I think most people wanted to see. So Zach, let's start with this. And I want to talk in terms of matchup. I want to talk could be one of the most intriguing matchups that we have in this game. We got a battle of centers here. UConn's Donovan Clinton against Purdue Zach Eady. How do you see this matchup going? Because Edie's been dominant all tournament long, but he hasn't faced a defender like Klingon. So who wins this matchup, the battle of the big men? Hey, it's a great question. I mean, look, Edie is, has been awesome in this tournament. He's averaging 28 a game. Klingon's been really good, especially these last two. He's got, you know, 40 points, 15 rebounds, nine blocks, you know, in the, the wins over Illinois and Alabama. Um, Klingon even said, like, look, he's got to stay out of foul trouble, and he knows he's not going to stop Edie. Um, he just wants to try to limit him. You know, the big thing here is Edie draws a ton of fouls. Can he get Klingon in foul trouble? And that's, you know, if you want to point to a weakness with UConn, and I, I really like their backup, Samson Johnson, but if you want to point to a weakness, UConn is not the same team defensively without Klingon. You know, can, uh, can, can Edie get him in foul trouble? You know, uh, the game kind of, for those who remember, reminds me of Florida's second championship, 2007, when they beat Ohio State and Greg Oden. Greg Oden had a great game. He got his points. Florida won the game. You know, it's the best player against the best team. But, look, there's no doubt, Edie's got to dominate that matchup. Purdue has any shot. All right, there you go. Edie's got to dominate. We'll see how that happens. Now, I thought about this because when we talked about the Final Four matchup with UConn and Alabama, you talked about how Alabama needed to hit a bunch of threes, and then we saw UConn have a game-changing run, right? So even when UConn has been down, we've seen their ability to produce game-changing runs. We saw this, as I said, in the national semifinal against Alabama. Does Purdue have an answer to slow down the Huskies and prevent these game-changing runs? Because we haven't seen anybody who can do that. Yeah, you know, Matt Painter talked a lot about turnovers and how you kind of just will always make you pay. You know, there's some teams where you turn it over and they hurt you sometimes. You kind of, he was saying, it's like automatic. You turn the ball over, they're going to make you pay with twos and threes. And that's a big factor here. Purdue cannot turn it over, especially cannot have live ball turnovers that lead to UConn runouts, lead to UConn advantages in transition. Purdue turned it over more than it wanted to against NC State. Um, Braden Smith had five turnovers. That to me is the big worry with Purdue is their guards. Can their guards, you know, take care of the ball? UConn is much more athletic, much more dynamic in terms of athleticism. I'm worried how, you know, Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer are going to deal with Castle and Newton and, and Diara and, and, and Cam Spencer. I think that's the, the area where Purdue can really be in trouble is if their guards turn it over, it's going gonna, it's gonna to lead to some bad things for Purdue. All right, so Boilermakers have to take care of the ball in this one if they want to have a shot to win along with Edie playing well. Now, one of the, I think, the things that is very intriguing for this game with the Huskies is obviously they're looking for back-to-back -back titles, and they are 5-0 and in men's basketball national championship games. They've looked great in this tourney, but is all the pressure on UConn in this game trying to go back-to-back? I wouldn't say all the pressure. I think there's always pressure when you get to a championship game. I mean, Purdue hasn't been in this game since 1969. I mean, I, I wouldn't say there isn't any pressure on Purdue. I mean, you, you get to this game, you want to win. 
UConn obviously has more pressure. They had, you know, just an absolutely incredible season. They're being talked about as one of the greatest teams ever. You know, the whole thing of repeating, which the UConn has never done. So they clearly have more pressure, but I wouldn't say Purdue is without pressure. Um, yes, they're the underdog. Yes, no, you know, most people think they, they're not going to win, but they they want to get to this game. This is almost certainly going to be it for Edie. I know he has one year left he can use if he wants, but you're seeing he's a projected first round pick. I mean, it's hard to see Purdue necessarily back in this game next year, but, you know, without some huge moves in, in the portal. Um, so, yeah, you kind of have more pressure, but I wouldn't say Purdue doesn't have any. All right, that's far pressure that goes there. I want to ask you this about X factors in this game. What player or players have to be X factors in order for the Boilermakers to pull off the upset on Monday night? You talked about how Edie's got to be strong and he's got to play well, but who could be the X factors for Purdue in this game? I like Lance Jones as an X factor. He played really well against NC State. He hit four threes. He's probably their most athletic perimeter player. He can really shoot it. I think he has to have a big game for them to win. Look, I think all their guards have to play well, Lawyer, Smith. But I think Lance Jones is a big one here just because, you know, his athleticism, his ability to hit three-point shot, um, he's probably going to see a lot of Stefan Castle in this game. We all know how good defensively Castle is. I'm going with Lance Jones as a potential X factor for Purdue. All right, going with Lance Jones there. We'll see how he plays in this matchup. Zach, you picked UConn at the start of this tournament. You had them. Do you see them getting the job done and making your prediction look good? Or are you going to switch it up on me now? Are you Are going to go with a Purdue upset in this one? What's the final pick from Zach Braziller to end this tournament? Are you sticking with UConn or not? Nah? I, I mean, this is this a serious question? It's a serious question. Sometimes people like to switch it up. I don't know. I'm trying to see. Okay. Maybe you want to switch it up. Maybe you have something for the people. You want to surprise Mark Hale. I don't know what's what's going on. But I'm just no, trying no, to see. No. <laughs> UConn by 16. Um, I think it'll be a somewhat competitive first half, and the second half will be a route. I just I just don't think the Purdue guards can handle UConn. Um, the, the athleticism factor, the explosiveness factor. I, I do have one way that Purdue can win. Um, do you want to hear it? Yeah, sure, please. Okay. I'll give them Alabama's guards. Purdue can win. <laughs> I just, as great as Edie is, and we all, Purdue's a very good team. I'm not, I'm not trying to dismiss Purdue. I just, UConn is just a different animal. They're just, they're way too good at every position. They have, they have difference makers that come off the bench. Um, you know, Purdue won, beat NC State somewhat handily, but NC State didn't play well. They missed a ton of shots. Mm. I thought a lot of makeable shots. Um, Edie's going to have to have a performance for the ages for this to even be close. I just I just do not like Lawyer and Smith against, you know, Castle and Newton. You know, I mean – UConn, like, as great as Clinton is, UConn is just so good at every person. They have so many guys that can hurt you. Um, I just I just don't think Purdue has has the depth and talent to, to match up with them. Look, I, I think it's going to be 2007 Florida, Ohio State all over again. The best team wins comfortably, but the best player has a game. Edie's going to play well. He's going to yeah. put up numbers, but I think they're just going to be somewhat hollow because I really don't see it as being a – I think we're going to know the result by, you know, with 10 minutes left in the game, I think UConn's going to be comfortably ahead. All right. Zach not moving off of his pick. Is UConn? Yes, Zach, that was a serious question. Now, just trying to see maybe you were, you know, maybe you changed your mind. Maybe you saw something differently, you know, out there in Arizona. Nope. Zach was not moving on it. UConn has been his pick from the beginning. He's stuck with it. He's going with them to the end, and we'll see how it all plays out. On Monday night, national championship game, Zach Braziller, New York Post Sports reporter, will be there giving you the best coverage on the game. Zach, appreciate you, man, and everything you've done for us through the tournament in terms of the coverage. We will talk soon. There will be plenty to talk about in the college basketball offseason with the transfer portal and so much more. So thank you, man. Evan, anytime. Thanks a lot.